Morning and welcome to ENG 099 Conversational American English. This is uh, lecture four on restaurant menus. We uh, I tried to do this lecture last night and um, it did not work out as well as I hoped. So hopefully this lecture this time this morning will be easier. And yeah, thank you for joining. Um, so, gonna go. This course is run off of a WordPress install on at Mr. Dot Dan Off dot org, Mr. Dot D A N O F F slash dot o Mr dot t a n o f f dot o r g slash e n g o nine nine all right and so this is the course and All right. So this is the course. You can introduction here, registration form. These are the lectures so far. All right, and then now what we are going to check out, and that's information about the Facebook. But for this lecture, I'm doing the notes in a little bit different fashion I made a pirate pad so you are welcome to join Okay, so this is the pad for today's lecture. Mm -hmm. If you want to join, please do. Visit piratepad.net slash eng09 and just start typing. Okay. Hope you can all read that. Cool. All right, so this is lecture four on restaurant menus. All right. Topics. Um, MOOC recap so far. So as I said, I did the, you can find the a link to the YouTube lecture here. If you want, attempt from last night. Uh, I'm not sure how long that link will stay active, but I probably will. I'll probably keep it there for posterity. <laughs> and I think these issues have been resolved by now. Um, we're going to go to restaurant menus. Then we're going to do language talk, 4 of 10, and the gift of the magi, 4 of 10. All right. So, start off with restaurant menus. This is a old restaurant from uh, old restaurant at a from 1860 menu, and so this is a hotel menu. So most likely a restaurant in a hotel.
Did it just start over? Okay, okay, okay. All right. Well, let's try this again. All right. So this is ENG 099, Conversational American English. And we are looking at a restaurant menu. All right, so this menu here. So when you arrive at a restaurant, this is a American hotel. And uh, this is a restaurant from 1860. But it is still, uh, the ideas are still appropriate today, or OK for today if you go to a nice restaurant. And obviously, this is a nice restaurant. So looking over the menu here, this is the menu from April 1st, 1860, Niagara Falls. This is the name is where, where this hotel restaurant was located. And so they have a bill of fare. So that's their food menu. So they have a tomato soup and uh, baking pike, some kind of pike fish. All right. And they have boiled meat, they have corned beef or chicken with egg sauce, ham, the other the tongue and the other quest items are not available. <laughs> Roast, beef, pork, veal, or turkey, no lamb or chicken. Entrees of veal veal pies and Irish stew. And sauces, Worcestershire and John Bull Harvey. Vegetables this season. And then for dessert, they have apple mince pies or plum pies. And over here on the left, they have alcohol, wine list, champagne, sherry, Madeira, Madeira, port, claret, Rhine wine, and beers, and porter. Two different kinds. Ales are a type of beer and pours another type of beer. These are the hours when you can eat. And then they have various cars for different parts of Niagara Falls that you could take. That's a very, that's a, that's not on too many menus. But anyway, okay, so you're looking it over and while you are looking it over, a waiter comes over. And asks, okay. The so waiter asks, can I start you off with something to drink? Yes, please. I'll start with a glass of the. You know, you could go some wine, but I think. And you know what? I think we're going to do wine. They have this white French wine. It looks like it's delicious, so I'll try that out. White. French wine. Okay. Excellent choice, sir. Okay. So then, So then, while the waiter is uh, getting the wine, you need to look over the menu and make your final choice of your uh, food that you want to order. The um, There's lots of different options, but you need to typically, at a nice restaurant, you would choose an appetizer, uh, main course, and sometimes dessert. Um, or you could just get a main course, too. Or sometimes people just get appetizers. to uh, They get like a big appetizer, but they just, Eat it themselves instead of sharing it. 
which is fine. It's another way to order. But for right now, we're going to do appetizer main course, and then afterwards we'll do a dessert order. All right. So the waiter comes back. Oh my gosh. Typo. It's early. So the waiter comes back and says, here you are. One glass of white wine. White French wine. So they pour your glass for you. And you say thanks. And the waiter is going to ask, are you ready to order? Say yes. Yes. We're gonna say great. Great. What can I start you? Um, great. What will you have? You can say. Um, so you want to start with the appetizer, and I think the tomato soup looks better. Looks very good. So I will start. Start with a bowl of your tomato soup, please. Tomato soup. Tomato soup, yes. And then so the waiter's just like confirming. He's just making sure that he heard you correctly, or he or she heard you correctly. All right. You say, and. And for my main course, I will have the chicken with egg sauce. Chicken is delicious. Delicious. Wonderful choice. All right. So as you can see, it's not too there's not a lot of, there's many different ways to say these different um, expressions, but um, there's also not, it's also, it can be fairly clear. So this is the beginning. This is like before dinner, drink, cocktail. Okay. And then this is the Main course. All right. And then after that, at the main course, you have dessert. All right. So now that you've eaten your chicken, your tomato soup, and you had chicken with egg sauce, and it was delicious, you look over and you said, oh, you know what? I think I'll have some I like a dessert. And then uh, look down at the pies, and now uh, this plum pie looks pretty good. The waiter comes over. So maybe like 30 minutes to eat. All right, 20 minutes. Take it back. 20 minutes until food comes out and eat for 30 minutes. All right. So, so then the waiter returns, taking your plates. The waiter asks, will ask, 
How was the chicken? And then you can say delicious. Thank you. Please give my regards to the chef. Chef. Now, please give my regards to the chef. That is a nice way, a very nice, very polite way to say. Please tell the chef that I thought his food was delicious. I thought his food was amazing. I want to give him a compliment. And the waiter says, absolutely. Now, uh, are you interested in any dessert? And you'll say, yes. Yes, thank you. I will have a piece of your peach pie. And the waiter says, peach is my favorite. Great. Peach is my favorite. Uh, favorite. Wonderful choice. Wonderful choice. Would you also like some coffee? And you can say yes. I would like some coffee. Yes, please. Uh, with yes, please. Black and black means no cream, no sugar, no milk, no sugar. Just coffee. Okay, so now this was a very, very simple example, but at a nice restaurant or any any restaurant where you sit down and a waiter or waitress comes over to help you. This is a sort of a normal format that you could use. They start off asking if you want a drink. By that, they mean alcohol. If you are over 21 in America, if you're under 21, then you can have a Coke or a glass of water. And then after they get your drinks, they'll come back and take your order for your main course. And then many restaurants that have dessert, they come back again and charge you for dessert. Now, if you have any questions about any of this or if um, any of this does not make sense, please let me know via Facebook, PDPU, Wikiversity, or directly on the course or by email. And with that, uh, we're going to transition from telephone, from getting caught up in Tuesday and Wednesday lessons. We're going to transition from restaurant menus to language talk, part four of ten. So before we do that, just to do a quick recap here. Apologize for this. There we go. All right, let's do a quick do a quick recap here. Uh, so this is again ENG 99 You register with this form. This is a YouTube lecture list. It has all the different. Um, Four different lectures. Last night's attempt it didn't work out so well. And then, um, this is a list of the various lectures. And then, so like, for example, formal telephone English. You can look here. As so it says, the formal telephone English video lecture notes and then the language talk and story the gift of the magi <laughs> so we are moving into the uh, language talk portion of this lesson
And after that, we can discuss the gift of the Magi. All right. Okay, language talk four of ten. All right, it's down here. All right, this is going to be a quick one, a uh, very quick one. And so here we're going to give a new definition. A sentence is an expression of a thought in words is the definition for this morning. So this is building off of the idea that a word is the sign of an idea from lecture one. And then, so multiple ideas become can, can become a thought. Okay, so, so this is important. So, like one, I, I, a word is the sign of an idea. Uh, bud, B U D, rosebud. We've talked a lot about this. Rosebud. Quick picture here for you. Actually, I don't need the picture. So, the rosebud, if I say bud, then in your mind you see a picture of a flower that has not is be has not opened yet is still closed and that is a rosebud but it's probably likely you don't have a rosebud in front of you so the word is a sign to your mind to see that idea the idea of the rosebud and so multiple ideas like rosebuds bloom in the spring put together become a thought so for example so hmm. so now, this is going to be part, this is going to be the lecture for assignment. Which of the following expressions contain words that have no connection? Which contain words merely associated and which are sentences? So, these are words. So, are they, do they have no connection? Are they merely associated or are they sentences? And so, flowers bloom. Let's see. So, first off, they have a connection. Flowers do bloom. They are merely associated, but I would say this is a sentence. Number one is a sentence. One is a sentence. Okay. And now, so I want you to go through those same three questions. Are these words, do these words have no connection, or are they associated, merely associated, or are they a sentence for all of these? Okay. All right. So that's assignment four. Complete that. All right. And then the gift of the Magi. So, like the other. <clears throat> and so, like, uh, same with language talk, the gift of the Magi is a story by, well, it's been broken up, it's a story broken up into a small portion each lecture. We're slowly working our way through. And this is an old Christmas story by O. Henry. It's uh, set in the early 20th century, early 1900s in New York City. Okay, we're gonna go back, well, go back to that now. And this will be the last thing we'll do as part of this lecture. Okay, the gift of the Magi. So this is talking about Della, and that is she's the wife of Jim. Suddenly, she whirled from the window and stood before the glass. Her eyes were shining brilliantly, but her face had lost its color within 20 seconds. Rapidly, she pulled down her hair and let it fall to its full length. So if you remember... Della is at home, and she's worried because she hasn't saved enough money to buy her husband a Christmas present. And this is, they're having tough times, and she wants to give him something nice. Now, 
There were two possessions of the James Dillingham Youngs in which they both took a mighty pride. One was Jim's gold watch that had been his father's and his grandfather's. So that's a nice watch. The other was Della's hair. Had the Queen of Sheba lived in the, in the flat across the air shaft, Della would have let her hair hang out the window some day to dry just to deprecate Her Majesty's jewels and gifts. Had King Solomon been the janitor, with all his treasures piled up in the basement, Jim would have pulled out his watch every time he passed, just to see him pluck at his beard from envy. So this is very, these two examples, these two sentences are very fun. They're saying that Della's hair is so nice that a queen would be jealous, and Jim's watch is so nice that a king would be envious. envious. So it's saying that even though they don't have a lot of money right now, they have these couple nice things. Um, but that's been about 25 minutes. And um, it's been about 25 minutes, and I try to keep these to 25 minutes ideally. So thank you for joining. Um, uh, we're going to take about a 10-minute break here, and then I'll put the uh, YouTube link, streaming link, into the Facebook page, or Facebook event page for Lecture 5. So hope to see you in 10 minutes. Remember the it's piratepad.net slash eng099.